All right, uh, we're going to get started here. So uh, thanks, thanks for joining us here. I'm Jim from Leomo. Um, I'm the sales representative here and uh, do a bit of bike fitting uh, here and there. So um, we did a little bit of a presentation with a bike fitting uh, uh, centric type of feel to it. Uh, so I hope you'll find it to be uh, interesting and worth your time. Also like to welcome uh, Joe Cabaretta, who's moderating things, helping me out on this. And uh, Adam Hansen, who's joined us as a guest panelist. Um, and uh, so welcome to Adam and Joe and the rest of you. And um, some of you I've talked to on the phone and uh, traded emails with, so welcome and thanks for joining. And to those of you I haven't met, let's uh, hopefully we can change that around sooner than later. All right, so our, our webinar, webinar today, uh, we're looking at foot stability across a range of pedals and cleats, and we'll get more into that by exactly what we're talking about here. So uh, to begin with, of course, we're using Leomo's LBS system uh, for this. And so why do we want to use LBS for this particular aspect of bike fitting? Um, it's, it's a way to, it's a technology to dive deeper into a bike fit and to really find that last two to three percent of optimization that uh, we wouldn't otherwise be able to to achieve through other means um, it's a great way to to find the, to discover the root cause of movement patterns that we may not like um, in the cycling movement um, and certainly those things are often manifested at the contact points of the bicycle being uh, the pedals or the saddle and of course, we can take um, your bike fitting to a new level of sophistication with this type of, of technology that can really set you apart from, from the competition. Uh, one of the best ways to get started with LBS is to hit me up at my email address right there. Um, we're offering a 60-day free trial of LBS, so you can really get a feel for it, uh, evaluate it, get to learn how to use it and incorporate, see how you can incorporate it into your uh, bike fitting operation. Uh, I wanna mention that we, uh, our team in Japan is, is diligently working right now on a daily use pass feature, um, which is gonna be a really cool way for uh, fitters and shops that don't have a, a really high number of fits coming through the door. Um, where the monthly pass or the yearly pass doesn't really make financial sense to them. Whereas the daily use pass can definitely allow you to control your costs and use it when and where you need it. So that's coming very, very soon. And of course, since you do need to have either a type R or a type S, um, uh, as well as an iPad to use uh, LBS, we are doing a type R giveaway program for bike fitters and shops in the US and you can find that link on Facebook if you haven't seen that already. So go ahead and sign up for that. Um, that contest will be ending here in a couple of weeks um, as we get closer to Christmas. All right, so here's just a real quick um, kind of a rundown of the features uh, of, for the different plans. Obviously, we have a standard plan and an advanced plan. The advanced plan offers uh, more functionality for the LBS. Uh, so you can see kind of the cost breakdown here. So for the standard plan, the daily use is going to be $30 a day. Um, and then there's the, uh, the check marks on which um, features you get to uh, use in the standard plan versus the advanced plan. So the advanced plan gives you basically the, the full meal deal on everything. Um, but certainly the standard plan does offer quite a bit of, of functionality that can really help you out. All right. So let's uh, bear with bear with me if you already kind of are familiar with things. But for those of us that aren't, um, uh, this is maybe their first introduction to Leomo and and uh, LBS. Uh, the IMUs. These are our sensors that are are used in uh, in conjunction with the Type R currently and soon to be the Type S. Um, we there are five sensors. Uh, and when we use them in a cycling application, there are six possible locations for those five sensors. 
but each of the sensors has a three axis gyrometer and a three axis accelerometer. So there's six data streams that are available uh, from each sensor or 30 total data streams. So quite a bit of data uh, that can be used. And of course, when we use the embedded uh, Leomo app in the type R, uh, there are algorithms built in that kind of take that data and distill it down into something a little bit more usable and understandable for uh, athletes and, and people that are less educated. Whereas when we look at the LBS, we can really look at the raw data and, and really dive into to analyzing the movement patterns. So uh, this is a quick explanation of the, of the data itself. Um, so we have, like I said, the three axes of the accelerometer, of course, the X, Y, and Z plane. Um, and so this is linear acceleration along those lines. So if we look at the X axis there, if the sensor is moving to our right, it's a positive, whereas if it's moving to our left, it would be a negative uh, acceleration, but it is still acceleration. So the positive and negative doesn't necessarily indicate fast or slower, it indicates direction. And of course, with the gyrometer, we're looking at angular velocity, and those velocities are around the axis. So if we look at the x-axis again uh, for the gyrometer, um, we are looking at um, sort of a, a circular motion. You can see the little arrow up there and, and what that represents. So it's movement around that x-axis. So it would be tilting the sensor from the top down, if that makes sense. So probably the more I talk about that, the less sense it makes. So, uh, so in the real world, what does that mean for, for when we're looking at uh, foot stability on the pedal? So gyro Z, uh, because the Z plane is straight down through the middle of the sensor, uh, we are looking at a twisting mo movement of the foot on top of the pedal. Uh, that would be gyro Z. Gyro Y is a rocking movement of the foot on the pedal, or kind of that varus valgus side to side tipping of the, of the foot on the pedal. Uh, in generally speaking, I, I think that uh, we can all agree that more of these movements is uh, less beneficial than less movement uh, when it comes to the interface of the, of the shoe and the pedal. All right, so quick little discussion of our, our test protocols and, and how, we, how we did this. Um, first off, I want to mention that this was not at all uh, intended to be a scientific type of test. Um, it was, uh, the intention was to really try and show how LVS could be used in a different way. Um, and so by the end of it, I hope uh, you'll agree with me that there it's a way to see something that we wouldn't normally uh, otherwise be able to see. So one of the questions, and, and I'll uh, digress for a moment and mention that um, the, the genesis for this whole idea came from, I was doing a bike fit with a client uh, who had uh, the cleats of his, uh, uh, his pedals were just completely worn out. And I noticed a great deal of movement uh, on the, of the foot on top of the pedal. And of course, he got new cleats and we reanalyzed him and the movement was significantly reduced. And so we said, well, let's, this is interesting for sure. Obviously it makes perfect sense that a worn out cleat would allow for a lot more um, uh, poor movement of the foot on the pedal. Um, and, and that was certainly born true when he got new cleats. Uh, but then we started thinking about a different way of looking at this whole thing. And one of the things that I think we can agree on is that there's sort of a general consensus in the cycling community that different types of pedals are all kind of perform the same when they're properly set up. But is that really true? Um, we didn't really know, so we thought we'd take a look. Uh, so the test that we did 
is we had a subject ride, various pedal types and cleat options when, when they were applicable or available. And, and to look at the foot movement of the pedal, well, of course, the gyro Y, which is that rocking, the varus valgus movement, and the foot twist of the gyro Z, the, uh, the twisting on top of the pedal. Our subject uh, is James, a 25 year old male with no significant injury history. He is a competitive uh, mountain bike racer. He races enduro competitions in the summer. Uh, our testing protocol was an easy warm up followed by a one minute kind of three out of 10 effort, a short recovery period, a one minute six out of 10 uh, effort with a recovery period, and then a 30 second uh, hard effort, nine out of 10 type of effort. Um, and we did that for every pedal and cleat combination that we tested. Uh, the equipment that we used was a Wahoo kicker. Uh, we did not normalize the saddle height between the different pedals, uh, mainly due to time, but also because uh, the differences in the stack height of the pedals was gonna be within a few millimeters of each other. And we didn't think it was super, super critical to, uh, to spend that time. We match the cleat position uh, to the athlete's preferred position. Whether that's the best position for him or not is another question. So we decided to reduce the variables and just go with what he's been riding and has been comfortable with. And I should also note that we purchased all new cleats. Um, not all of the pedals were brand new, but they were all in excellent condition. But at least the, uh, the cleats were all brand new. For all right, so the pedals that we looked at, we looked at the, uh, the Look Keo Blade Carbon uh, with the zero degree float, the black cleat, and the nine degree float, the red cleat. We looked at an older pair of the Time iClick 2s. Um, the float cleat was what we used. I could not find a, a non-fixed uh, cleat available in the US. And uh, we looked at the speed play zero, and of course the speed play zero doesn't have different types of cleats to set your float, but it has the adjustments on the cleat itself. So we opened up the screws to have maximum float, and then we closed them down all the way to have no float. We also looked at two mountain bike pedals, kind of a standard Shimano mountain pedal with the uh, standard SH-51 cleat, and an older time ATAC uh, cross country pedal, uh, we set the cleats up in the kind of the standard, the 13 degree release. Uh, and of course, uh, the notes on the analysis here, um, and this will make more sense a little bit further down the road. Um, as I discussed, we did the two movements of the foot rock, gyro Y, and the foot twist in gyro Z. Uh, and this is, this is kind of important, not that we're gonna have a test at the end, but this will be a little bit important to remember, that we took the variance, which we'll describe very soon um, for the left and right foot. And we added those together to kind of come up with an overall pedal system stability score. And we uh, took the difference in those variance values to assess the symmetry of, of the pedal system, left to right. So the smaller the difference in the variance would indicate that the left and right foot performed more similarly to each other. Whereas when we added those things together, a high score would indicate a lot of foot movement on, on the pedal. And we did that for both uh, gyro Y and gyro Z, calculated them for each of the three efforts and compared them. All right, so have a little video here of the LBS. So when we look at this, um, we, we have the foot gyro Y um, in uh, data fields one and two, gyro Z in three and four, and we have an oscilloscope of gyro Y for both the right foot and the left foot. So with what, what's great about LBS is that we can see certainly uh, in the slow-mo feature, if we look at, at James's pedaling, we can see some movement occurring of the foot on top of the pedal as he pedals. Certainly you can kind of see that foot twist of gyro Z. Um, it's quite uh, noticeable on, the, on his right foot where his heel kind of kicks in towards the center line of the bike. Um, certainly we can see that he kind of pedals um, 
a, a little bit uh, supinated on the left foot. Um, so there's definitely some movement happening, which is borne out by the data streams below. So on his right foot, the gyro, was up, gyro Y is pretty small in this particular clip. Um, so small, in fact, that it maybe is just kind of his foot flexing inside the shoe. Whereas in the left foot, the gyro Y values are much higher. And certainly the gyro Z values on the left foot are, mu are much higher as well. When we look at the oscilloscope uh, feature, which is a newer feature for LBS, which is a pretty cool feature for sure. Um, what this does, this is data fields five and six. What this does is it takes each of those movement cycles in, the, in our little uh, stretch of, of data here and lays them down on top of one another. So we can see that on the right foot in, in data field five, uh, his movement pattern is fairly well defined by that, uh, by that kind of um, more defined uh, band of movement. Whereas on the left foot, not only is the degree of amplitude greater, but it's also quite a bit more fuzzy in that he's doing a lot of a lot of different movements in that movement pattern. So it's, it's indicative of quite a bit of instability. So, um, but also with, with the LBS, which is, which is super cool, is we can really kind of stop things and we can look in and, and see exactly where uh, the movement patterns are happening. So for example, here at bottom dead center in uh, data field two, we can see that that's where we're getting quite a bit of movement from James of the, of the foot on the pedal. Similarly, on the right foot at the bottom dead center, that's where you get some of that twisting movement. All right, so we talked about the variance. What does the variance mean? So if we look here, uh, you see the yellow arrows. That's pointing to the variance, and that's a description of kind of the amplitude of the cycles that are happening in the movement pattern. So in fields one and two, we see a variance of 0 0.7, so not very much movement. Uh, in number two, uh, the left foot gyro Y, we see a 6.0, so significantly more movement on the left foot than the right foot. Uh, similarly, if we look at the uh, gyro Z values, three and four, right foot at 14, left foot at 26.7. So quite a bit more movement on the right foot and certainly the oscilloscope, oscilloscope graph kind of uh, points that out. And then uh, the, as I kind of mentioned before, the yellow circles indicate that these are the points where we're seeing that movement. So we can really identify where that movement occurs in the pedal stroke, which is valuable. You know, just knowing that the movement is occurring is one thing, knowing where it occurs in the pedal stroke, I think is a completely different uh, type of information that is super, super valuable. And of course, that's only possible when we sync the video and the data. And that's one of the great features of the LBS is that we can sync the video, we can slow it down, and we can look at the data and find out exactly where uh, where the movement patterns are occurring in the pedal stroke. And then we can start to dive in and kind of look and see uh, what might be the cause of that. Uh, and certainly that's, in James's case, it's happening up further up the chain, up in the, uh, up in the hip most likely. Um, and, but that's, like I said, a different discussion. Uh, the, the effort level of this one was uh, kind of an easy one. This was an easy one. We had that question from Joe. So, all right, so let's get into the data a little bit now that we've kind of discussed some other things. So um, the first one, and, and bear with me, I, I won't get super, super heavy with the data because data is boring and it feels like we're back in school. But um, uh, the nine degree float, the red cleat on the, on the uh, look carbon blade, heel blade, um, we can see uh, that the difference 
uh, in gyro Y, so the top part of the chart, uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, hardly any difference. So very, very similar left to right. When we combine the scores, we see that there was more movement under the hard pedaling effort at 8.5. And certainly when we look at gyro Z, uh, we see that in this case, there was a bigger difference of 9.4 and it got significantly better. Um, so more symmetrical as the efforts uh, increased. And so, and then the combined score, we had the most movement of the foot in gyro Z, the twisting movement, as we got into the hard pedaling effort. Uh, when we went to the zero degree float, the black pleat, um, the difference in this case increased in gyro Y at the, at the hardest effort, and certainly the combined um, was also uh, highest in the hard pedaling, also born true in the gyro Z numbers. And so you'll notice here that significantly uh, for gyro Z, the combined score of 67.0 compared to the nine degree float of 36.8, that's almost double. So quite a bit more movement, uh, ironically, with the zero degree float pleat. So uh, for this athlete, he would certainly it would be indicated that a, a float pleat would be better for him. When we looked at the time, I click two, uh, we see higher numbers, both in the difference, so more asymmetries left to right, and the combined scores also tended to be a little bit higher than the look, the look pedal. Certainly in the gyro Z, there was quite a bit more movement. And one of the factors in this, of course, is that times pedal pleat design uh, allows for a little bit of side-to-side -side movement, a little bit of shifting, uh, which probably contributed to these higher scores. All right, so then when we get to the speed play zero, the full float, so we open those screws up all the way so they weren't even visible. Here uh, in the full float, in gyro Y, the, that rocking motion, um, maybe a little bit higher movement um, than we saw with the other pedals, but certainly when we looked at gyro Z, the numbers really start to increase. And again, we start to see some of this difference uh, in the easy pedaling that got better as, as the efforts went up, but the combined values of that gyro Z were quite high um, under the heavy pedaling load. In the no float, uh, again, this is, this is pretty interesting in the sense that the difference uh, in gyro Y, so that rocking of the foot again, um, was pretty low uh, across all three. Uh, and the combined score was also quite low in gyro Y. But when we look at gyro Z, we see, again, pretty big numbers. Um, so this particular pedal system probably not the best choice, especially in a no float situation for this particular athlete. Uh, and then we step into the, uh, the mountain bike pedals a little bit. And obviously there's not a lot of adjustments that we can make uh, with the mountain bike cleat um, or the pedal itself. So we're gonna see a little bit more consistent numbers. Um, certainly the difference is pretty low in gyro Y across the board as well as for gyro Z. So pretty consistent uh, symm uh, symmetrical movement patterns uh, between right and left foot. Uh, the combined score was pretty low uh, for, for both gyro Y and gyro Z uh, compared to some of the other pedals that we saw. And we looked at uh, an older time uh, pedal as well. Uh, certainly these numbers compared to the previous slide show a bigger difference between right and left, quite a bit uh, significant difference, as well as a much higher combined score. And again, Time's uh, philosophy with their pedals and cleats is to allow for that side to side movement, which likely contributed to some of these, uh, these numbers. All right, so. Uh, one of the things that um, 
Now, for some reason, my slide didn't work out as, as well as it was supposed to. But uh, we, we have different philosophies and designs of pedals and cleats. And so with, if we look on the right-hand side, the look, um, and, and, and I should also digress that we looked at look and not Shimano um, as far as road pedals go, because the, the look in Shimano uh, pedal systems are so very similar to each other. But certainly, uh, and this is a bit of a simplistic uh, uh, examination of the movement that occurs uh, with the cleat in the pedal, it, because there's a lot of movement that's happening, but we can primarily say that the majority of the float in a look or a Shimano road pedal is coming from the rearward portion of the, of the cleat. Um, if we look on the left-hand side, the time cleat, there's supposed to be another little black arrowy thing, um, but on the top of it, showing, indicating that the primary float is occurring at the front of the cleat. So a little bit of a difference in how that float is realized between the cleat and the, and the pedal. Whereas, of course, in the middle of the speed play, that float is happening directly on top of the pedal itself. So three different ways of achieving float, all kind of the same, but also a little bit different in how it functions. Oh, there's my little vehicle. <laughs> it came back. So that, that's what I meant. All right, so hopefully that's, that's clear. All right, so let's uh, kind of roll through and find and summarize some things. Um, we, for, for James, for this particular athlete, uh, the look pedal with the nine degree float was better than the zero degree float. And we can kind of scroll back here in a minute and look at some of those numbers. Now that we kind of have a more complete picture so we can kind of review those. Um, the time I click two, had significant movement in both of the planes, both in gyro Y and gyro Z, so probably not the best choice for James. Uh, the speed play exhibited significant movement in both float and no float conditions. Again, also probably not the best choice for James. Uh, the Shimano mountain bike pedal had very similar values to the look road pedal with the nine degree float cleat. And the time mountain bike pedal had significant movement again with the gyro Y, that rocking movement was especially noteworthy for this particular athlete. So uh, when we look at some of these conclusions, I will point out that the look road pedal with the nine degree float cleat and the Shimano mountain bike pedal are the subject's personal pedals. So does that mean that he's adapted and most well used to these pedal systems and that's why his performance is superior to the other brands? I think that that's very possible, very possible. Um, so the speed play pedals clearly allowed for more movement of the foot on the pedal. And so then the question comes up, should the, the pedal and cleat system be restricting this natural movement that the athlete wants to do? That's, I think, uh, a good question that we could debate until the cows come home. Um, and certainly, I don't have an answer to that at the moment. But I think we can say for sure that not all pedal sy systems may be appropriate for all athletes. So let me go back here real quick, just so we can kind of review this. So now that we have sort of the full picture, so we can see the nine degree fleet float cleat, um, fairly low movements in gyro Y and gyro Z compared to some of those other ones. When we go to the zero degree float, um, the numbers get a little bit higher, especially in gyro Z, which is interesting. You would think that that would limit that movement, but in this case, it actually went up. The time I click, uh, higher numbers, not only in gyro Y, but also significantly in gyro Z, a lot more movement uh, allowed in this particular pedal system. Uh, the full float option with the speed play zero. Again, uh, the, 
the asymmetry was not tremendous, but certainly uh, when we looked at the combined movement, we saw higher values, especially in gyro Z. Uh, in the no float, uh, gyro, uh, gyro Y, reasonably low values, but again, pretty high values in gyro Z, even though there was no float offered by the, by the cleat. And then in the Shimano mountain bike pedals, uh, fairly low numbers, very similar to what we saw with uh, the float cleat and look road pedal. And finally, the time mountain bike pedal with pretty high numbers in gyro Y. So a lot of foot rocking in this particular pedal, pedal system and reasonably high numbers in gyro Z. Uh, noteworthy because, you know, I think that in my mind, uh, the difference between the mountain bike pedals would be extremely minimal, but the data did not support that. Uh, before I forget, let's, uh, if we want to do further discussion after you have time to think about things, um, certainly support at leomo.io, um, Facebook, the other social media stuff is all there, definitely open. Uh, it's open for, for business, for questions and comments. For those that I haven't met or talked with before, I hope to uh, change that very soon. So thanks again and happy holidays to everybody.